Welcome everybody to the Ovation Agency's Holiday Grammy Impact Edition. Today we have Dane Vlasi and Sagita Carr, who are going to talk about mythologies, which is Dane's homage to her Greek heritage. And Sagita as this um, is one of the featured sopranos. Take it away, people. Hey. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, let me change this so far. I've got to speak with you. There you go. I am um, I'm very excited about this, this impact. One of the reasons why it's because we, um, I, 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 I spent a lot of time talking about myself, so I apologize. <laughs> but let me just start by saying congratulations. Congratulations, Danae and Sangeeta for the nomination in best classical solo. That's best solo Thank classical. You so much. I know, I, what, how did you feel when you for, when you heard your names read, I think I was about to fall over. At least that's what it looked like on my camera. <laughs> okay. I didn't watch the broadcast, but I had Sangeeta texting me, going, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" I know that's got it. I I yeah, that is. It's kind of surreal. Mm -hmm. It is and surreal. It, yeah, it's kind of surreal. And um, like, did your mother call you or like, you know, like something I, like- I, I did, my, my brother actually texted me. He's like, did, did, you, did you get a nomination? And then I got, another, I got another text message from a niece saying, I think I just saw your name on the list. Is that for real or is it for real? <laughs> exactly, is it for real? No, unless someone's lying to us. <laughs> well, with all these different shifts and changes that they were doing at the last minute, it was just like any number yeah. of things could, could have happened. I was, I, 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 uh, I, I would hate, you know, what they, what they, so they say, um, um, jinx or or whatever, you know. Oh, jinx it. Yeah, <laughs> we made. Uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let's talk about the nomination you were in. Yeah. So solo classical. Now, I I actually, you know, don't pay much attention to the classical music um, unless like it's like super like popular was in a you know movie or something like that. But this album is so intriguing to me. Um, and you know, Danae as a quote unquote award winning composer, um how did you get to, you know, this concept of mythologies? Well, thank you so much. Um, let me just correct the, the category for which it's nominated. Okay. It's best classical vocal solo album. No, it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> there is another category in classical that's, that's for instrumental solo. So I want yeah. to make sure those are not confused. It's a different yes. vocal solo. So um, how I got to this concept, well, it's, I'm very well aware of my heritage. It's something that I grew up with, very attached to a dual culture. I have a French mother, I was born in France. I have a Greek father who's from the island of Ithaca. And I wanted to, first of all, I was inspired by Greek mythology, just as from the perspective of storytelling. And I wanted to specifically focus on mythologies that were tied to that particular period of um, Homerian myths, as in the Odyssey, because my father is from Ithaca, and that's the island of King Odysseus that he journeys to return to after the Trojan Wars, and it's a 10-year epic journey. And the, the stories themselves are really the foundation of contemporary superhero film stories in which we have yeah. amazing superheroes that are human to some extent, but really superhuman in their own way. And um, we celebrate that concept in our culture today, even 3,000 years after Homer's Odyssey was written. Right. 
And but a lot of people don't realize that these stories are being retold again and again and again, but with new faces, but the, right. the, the structure and the, the relationships are all the same. It means that the stories were, uh, are indelible, you yes. know? Um, and so it's remarkable um, that, um, that you have gone back a couple thousand years and it's still very contemporary. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what makes um, what I think classical music so fresh in the hands of, of, of composers like you is you've taken the source material and, um, and breathed, breathed, is that right? Breathed, breathed <laughs> new life into it. Um, so I'm, I, I just love it. It's, it's, it was, I had it on today um, after I came in from a long day out in the street and I was just like, it was just so, epic <laughs> it, you know just just beautiful just just you know just remarkable i i guess the one thing i mean it seems like everybody seems to know each other um but how did you meet sangita and decide that she was the one to breathe life into these songs we met around 2017 in the fall of 2017 when she reached out to me on social media and um invited me to attend an album release party that she was doing about one month later and i was absolutely mesmerized by her voice the moment i heard her sound of course i i was very touched by the sincerity the kindness of her message to begin with um it's unusual to hear some a, a, a colleague really take the trouble to listen to your music and really delve into why they love it rather than just saying, hey, that's an awesome piece, thank you for writing it. She really went into detail about what she loved and that really drew my attention. And when I heard her and her voice, I was, I was stunned. I've never heard a voice like that in my life. She has a quality that's one of the most rich, lush, soothing and healing sonorities that you can possibly imagine in this universe. And it completely fits oh with her. <laughs> I, it, I think that you perfectly describe Sangeeta's voice. And I know she's here, but we're going to talk about her, you know, in front of her face. I, uh, healing was a word that I, I, I felt when I heard that album that you, that you were referencing to. It was just like, it, it's like the, the, the sonic tone uh, of her instrument, mm -hmm. of her vocal instrument is absolutely healing. And, um, you know, so um, I became familiar with Sangeeta and her music uh, through um, my associate, Greg Selsa. Yeah. And um, he was talking about, oh, Sangeeta this, Sangeeta that. And I was like, oh, Sangeeta. And then when I heard it, I was just like, oh, Sangeeta. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank so, you so much. Yes. I, I, I just want to throw out there to you, you know, we, this question gets asked often and I never get bored of answering it because it just allows me to go back into that moment of that first discovery of this incredible woman that we're sitting right in front of on the screen, Dane. Um, I think, you know, when I first, everything was an image at first, you see the image and then you check out their music and you get drawn into their world and their universe. And it was truly, a universe that I felt so connected to. Like I felt as if I've known her for ages. I felt like I've heard her music for lifetimes after lifetimes. It's, it was a very beautiful connection. And music says so much about our souls. It exposes so much. So I just felt like I had this gorgeous being, not only physically beautiful, but her soul just like came through in the music and reached out to me. So it, you know, it's such a, blessing to know you my love I love you so much I love you too <laughs> I miss you <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just best friends and so oh that's so <laughs> how long have you guys known each other since the fall since of 2017 yeah you know how it goes Jason huh <laughs> You know how it goes, Jason. Everybody, I mean, it's like some people just fall into it, just like me and you. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, so yeah, I it's, it's beautiful. Take it away. 
Uh, so have you guys done other stuff together or was this like really your first work that you decided to, to, to perform as? Yeah, we have other projects together, but you know, we've never done like this full big project together. Dene helped to compose some beautiful choral um, arrangements, for one of my albums, Compassion, which I was just listening to the other day and listening to all of that, it's so beautiful. And, um, and then she also wrote the album Poem, which featured Hila Plitman, who is on this album as well. And I got to twinkle in here and there. So we've already started collaborating. And I think it was this album that um, it was full force. So when we, when we were talking about um, vocal for classical, it's such an unusual field because you think of classical as uh, something that you would hear uh, from Mozart to Beethoven. Um, when you're doing classical today, um, Danae, how, how, do, how do you listen to older classical and kind of put it into today's form? I mean, you, you think about that with jazz where old jazz has a specific sound and where's the bridge in between today and from let's say 1600s, 1700s? It's actually a really great question. I don't fully know how to answer because the music that comes out of me is not, I, I'm not a chameleon composer. I'm not like those amazing colleagues of mine who are capable as film composers to write hip hop one day and then turn around and write a big orchestral score the next and they can just mimic anything. Um, that's not me. The music that you hear coming out of my pen is just truly authentically all I know how to do. Right. Um, so I really feel my heart lies in the 19th century. My greatest influences are the great romantic composers. And there's no, there's no greater fulfilling emotional process for me than composing and following a creative thread. Sometimes that thread leans a little impressionistic. I can't help my French heritage. Right. <laughs> Um, but I don't make the conscious choice to think, oh, I need to write a classical piece. It's just what comes out. And you should know that the, the Grammys have their own uh, placement committees who decide where projects are placed. So they decided this was classical music and that it decided, you know, <laughs> decided that it was going to go into best classical vocal solo for consideration. Well, I want to mention one thing to you because, you know, Dane, she's, she's mentioned numerous of times that I am, I, she, she says, I feel like I'm a pretty traditional classical musician. That's all I know. That's what I compose. But I think that, and coming from the outside of you, Dane, is that her music, just like other composers, but so much of Dane is her personality, mm -hmm. her entire, like, soul cosmic mind goes into her music she's truly channeling so much of who she is it's not about trying to be anything or sound like anything in particular she's just sort of channeling and that's why i feel it's uh 21st century i don't know modern classical music but it's still so lush and feminine and romantic and poetic and all of those words describe this woman right here. So it's really so much her element, her world, her essence, the ethereal side of her personality and her consciousness. It's all in this, in her music. Right. Well, you know, when you think about uh, mythology and classical, we're talking about two different times and you have someone like Homer who writes and Shakespeare who writes, and you kind of put that, as two great storytellers and you know you've combined the, the the mythic the the storytelling of going back 5000 years or whenever it was comparatively to the 16 1700s um why why mythology why the title and, mythologies yeah but i mean why cuz even in the videos there's a lot of stuff of mythology in there but at the same time your the music itself you know, back in ancient Greece wasn't classical. So how did you, again, with the bridge thing, how did we get to- Thank you, yeah, I was gonna say exactly, there's the bridge. 
Um, this is very much about bridging tradition to our contemporary era mm -hmm. through the lens of the instrumentation that I've chosen. Um, and really, I'm using, in many, many cases, I'm using instrumentation that's unusual. First of all, it's uh, relatively rare for um, this kind of music to, to even be written. I can't say that there are that many pieces in, in the universe that are written for two high sopranos. Right. Most female duets are a high voice and a low voice. Um, the instrumentation that was chosen here was about the storytelling and about um, honoring the artists that inspire me, everyone on this project whether that's flutist Roger Kellerman or violinist Lily Hayden or um, a cellist Eru Matsumoto, the other two pianists who play on this project with me, Robert Thies and Brendan White. Um, I have a, a beautiful violist, Virginie Laflac de Castera. These are all people who have given me their talent, their heart, their friendship and with whom I really wanted to work. And so in the framework of trying to tell this story of taking inspiration from 3000 years ago from ancient stories and trying to place them in, the, in a contemporary instrument world, um, I was really working with the desire to simply feature the people that inspire me. <laughs> That's my priority right. to work in the most compassionate uplifting environment that I can create because that's where I thrive that's where the music is the most beautiful um, and then um, I just reached out and and brought some contemporary elements for example percussion which would not have been used in this way um, it would even have been a stretch in in 19th century opera to bring in a thunder sheet to create yeah. thunder and lightning in storytelling. And for that, I had the amazing percussionist um, Nadim Majalani and Emilio Myler, who's my co-producer. Um, and the, the combination of these unusual instruments, unusual um, vocal and, and instrumental um, groupings are really 21st century. And yeah. so the other question I posed my, for myself was how much of the ancient realm I really wanted to bring in. And it crossed my mind, this could have been in Greek, but I wanted it to be accessible. I wanted the stories to be really, really relatable and for the text to be in English for that reason. Um, so once I decided the instrumentation was gonna be contemporary instruments rather than leaning heavily on, an, on ancient instruments, which have their own tuning and a whole other approach, harmonically, it would have created a very different palette than what I did here, which might have left the average listener cold emotionally because I wanted, um, I mean, I, we're trained to hear music in the Western world based in a certain harmonic tradition now. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to ancient lyras and really ancient tuning, it lacks, well, we lack understanding um, emotionally of how that music is meant to communicate. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I communicated would be accessible to a contemporary listener through instruments that they know, through sounds they may be familiar with, and through um, a language, English, that's immediate and accessible. So that's kind of how we got to the, the instrumentation and the, um, the choice of English as a language for this. So I'm not trying to reproduce ancient music because those CDs exist and I love yeah. them. Um, I'm, I'm trying to honor um, the bigger picture, which is the grandeur of the storytelling. Right. I wanna add one thing to what Danae was saying because I, I just feel like this is such a, um, a blessing and such a unique thing as a vocalist, as a classical singer. Dane had composed this work with considering all of the instrumentalists, all of the unique players, all of the unique musicians, and the two of us singers, Hila and I. And so it's quite special when there's music composed for us as singers, because our mm -hmm. voices are so different from everyone else's. We are all very unique. But when she's, she knows what our strengths are and she'll go there, she'll write, it's like putting on that perfect fitting dress or that perfect pair of shoes. <laughs> it's, it's incredible 
as a singer, it feels amazing to be able to sing something that it was written for you, for your voice type, for the color of your voice, your range, you know, it's really such a, a different experience to be able to perform it this way. It's amazing. Were, you challenged, were you challenged at all? Oh, heck yes, I was challenged. <laughs> She's no joke, this woman. <laughs> but I think she knew that we are always up for the challenge. Hila and I both just absolutely crave that stretch in our vo voices and the range and, you know, these beautiful, crazy intervals and jumping here, there. there. I mean, it's, it's, it's acrobatics, absolutely. <laughs> right. But we love that. We love it. How many octaves can you sing in? Oh gosh, I don't know. What is it? Three and a half? Yeah. Almost four? You're at four. <laughs> we, I tested her once. She's at four octaves. <laughs> That's hard. I know, I know Bob McFerrin. <laughs> yeah, Bob McFerrin is a very high octave and when he sings too. I mean, he's able to he has such a huge stretch too. So I mean, that's yeah. incredibly you know, impressive. So when, there's, when there's music like that, that allows you to stretch your range, it's it's incredible for us because it's like, wow, to go there, to get there, it feels incredible in the body, in the breath. You know, you really have to prepare for these moments and it's, it's, it's sensational. <laughs> I am, I am um, enjoying this love fest. I, um, <laughs> I, I think that I, I, I want to do a little bit of a pivot um, kind of going back to the top of the conversation because, um, well, maybe before the people got on, it's about um, uh, classical music in contemporary context, i.e. education. Um, I, when I was a kid, actually, well, probably when all of us were kids, there, were, there was music being taught in the schools. I had the blessing of um, learning violin and then playing viola for nine years. And um, then I went to college and kind of laid my viola down, but I've always had an appreciation for the great masters. My, my, um, I'm a particular fan of Mahler and of Brahms. Um, but, um, you know, how do we, um, I, I guess it, it's a two part question for each of you. How did you come to um, your instrument? So for you, um, Danae, um, playing the piano and then ultimately become a composer. And for you, <coughs> Sangeeta, when did you learn that you had this vocal gift and you know, decided to pursue that as a creative path? Because for young people, um, you know, I, I don't wanna be disparaging in any way, but like, you know, actually picking up an instrument and playing it is kind of a foreign to them. You know, what do they know? They know how to, you know, press beats boxes and, <laughs> and on an NPC. And, and that's an art in and of itself. Okay. But, you know, being able to actually pick up an instrument and play it or learn the intricacies of your vocal instrument and utilize that to make beautiful, music that's a whole nother level of creativity so i just kind of wanted to do that and you know have you know that conversation if you would my answer is really short i i learned the piano before i formed my first memories really so you one of those people <laughs> And I laugh because I was kind of the same way. When I was a little kid, my, my dad tells me stories of uh, we would go visit people and we didn't have a piano at home, but I was just so drawn to the piano or anything that looked like a piano. I would just like run across the room and start playing. Uh, so like I was three years old. So I totally understand that, that the music was in you. That's, that's cool. So did you like take piano lessons like from the time you were like five years old on? Exactly. Okay. And, but when did you know that you could actually write the music that you were playing? That was actually a very long, slow process. I spent about 10 years writing pieces without guidance, without 
I, it, it wasn't malicious, but there was simply no support from my instructors who were not trained to teach composition. They were teaching piano. And right. I just I just wrote what I felt like writing. And, and then when it got a cold reception, I thought, mm, OK, I'll put this aside. And then right. I come back you know, a year or two later and try something else. But I didn't fully throw myself into composition until my 20s, knowing oh. at that point that I really wanted to do it, being very clear on the fact that I had things to say musically and right. care whether anybody wanted to hear right. it I was writing it down. <laughs> Well, I, I read in your bios, you were like, whether anyone heard a note, I just have to write this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really, really impressive because, um, you know, I hate to say it, I mean, in our, our success-driven society, so, so many people are doing what they're doing for recognition and for accolades and to be doing it with the purity of heart. Mm -hmm. That is that is a really beautiful thing. So, uh, Sangeeta, mm -hmm. when did you realize that you had an uh, or an extraordinary instrument? Um, were you were were you two a little <laughs> kid and somebody said, "Oh, you sing Happy Birthday for your aunt"? <laughs> you know, I love I love telling this story because I just um, I'm so grateful for my parents. I was probably four years old and my dad came home with a VHS and his friend at work had said, he, he thinks you guys should be watching this. And it turned out to be the sound of music. Oh. And so as a little four year old watching the sound of music and all these other kids in that movie and Julie Andrews singing, I don't know what happened, but I just, I fell so in love with the music and the voices and I would I learned all of the songs and obviously everything on the radio from pop music and on and I just started imitating these sounds and I never ever thought oh I have a good voice I'm singing so pretty whatever I, I don't even think I ever thought of that I just remembered enjoying the way that it felt to sing mm -hmm. and then all my life growing up I would just sing and sing and sing and everything even being so shy I'd sing by myself and then I started to recognize that I liked the sound of my voice. Oh. And it wasn't until I became an adult, young adult, 19 years old, I took my very first voice lesson and I was given an aria. I can't even remember which aria that was, but my teacher coached me on it and I've never created this operatic sound in my life until that moment. And it was the most strange sensation and beautiful moment, beautiful experience. And I just became intrigued, my ears and my, like I said, it's a physical thing. It's an energetic thing that really um, pulled me in. And I just started training more and more. And next thing I know, my the staff of that school, they're like, you need to, you need to do this. like whatever else you're doing, cut it now, because we will support you and help you on this journey. Um, and then from there, it became really like a yogic experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I started practicing yoga and all of this and everything just kind of came together. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered for me, singing and yoga was like I, an identical experience. So oh. it actually became a very spiritual experience for me as a singer. And I think every day I'm learning more and more how to deepen that connection. I don't think I'll ever stop learning um, or wanting to disconnect from that journey. It's just been um, quite an amazing process and it's, it's continuing to be an amazing process. I'm so impressed that both of you didn't come to, you know, your um, awakenings, if you would. Um, until your 20s, like in your late teens, early, or early 20s. Um, you hear, you know, so many stories about successful, accomplished um, composers and singers having been trained from the womb, if you would. Mm -hmm. You had your own kind of path to get there, but to come to this realization, okay, this is what I want to do. That's, that's great. So you weren't pushed into it and everything. You found mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I think our souls 
needed the training first sure. as a young age and we yeah. needed to really grow on a conscious level before yeah. we can actually put meaning and purpose into music on a whole other level and right. it's not just about fame and fortune and popularity and all of that because we could have done that and gone a completely different yes. direction yes. and not have been fulfilled or fulfilling for anyone else. Right. So I think we had to grow as people and as humans before we really took it into the world. Danae, question. Did you, did you have to, like when you were taking lessons, piano, piano lessons, things of that nature, did you, um, did you do all the recitals and things of that nature? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> She was born in France. Of course I did recite it. <laughs> all of it. Recitals, competitions, all of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. You did have that little extra flourish when you flipped your hair when you <laughs> Well, I'm impressed with Danae because she sits there completely with patience and perfect posture that sometimes I can't tell if the screen has frozen on her. <laughs> it's because she's present. That's what I mean. It's just, she's just, she's I love it. Present. It's so great. I am, um, I know Jason has, has to go and I don't, you know, I, I could go round and round, just, you know, fascinated with uh, um, your creative process and, and, and how this project came together. I. I, I do actually have, have a question that has not necessarily about the music, but about the music video for Sirens. Uh, talk a little bit about how that came together. Sirens was a long standing dream for me. As I wrote the music, I imagined these themes in my head. Mm -hmm. And I, I never knew as I was writing it that I would one day make a music video. I just trusted that I needed to write this music. I was absolutely obsessed and passionate working on it as much as I could for probably three or four months. And I put it aside. I got busy doing other things. I actually released a different album. I was in mythologies. It's been a five year project interrupted by other projects. Right, right. Um, so it's something that has stayed with me slowly writing those pieces slowly conceptualizing how it was all going to come together while i was working on other things and so i came back to sirens having um put it aside for six or seven months and i came back to it and again very intensively delved into it for another two months of writing and polishing and and rethinking it's a very long piece the full length version is 14 and a half minutes and um, for this music video, we did, an, uh, we did the abridged version. So there are sort of two versions of the piece. There's the abridged version that doesn't include two and a half minutes of additional piano material. And it doesn't have the percussion, which is all part of what would be the full length cinematic version, which we're calling Siren Cinematic. Um, I needed to do two versions because there needs to be a version that can be really performed in a realistic manner. Mm -hmm. And then the cinematic version would not be impossible. We've really considered how this could be done in a, in a performance, but mm -hmm. wow, it would be a lot more work to make that effective in performance. So when we decided to do the music video, we went with the shorter version, um, knowing that the imagery would cover for what the percussion, now mm -hmm. that it was lacking, the percussion wouldn't be included. And so this music video, it was, a, it was a desire to make a grand music video, but I had no idea how to get there, either in terms of relationships or, or in terms of finances and et cetera. Um, but I think there's a story here in having enough vision and faith in yourself to right. voice your dreams, to say yeah. out loud what you yes. want. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, as I was getting nearer to this project really being a concrete um, defined complete creative vision with uh, the clarity of who exactly was going to do what on it who which performers would, would perform planning a release date wondering how to promote this project I expressed to a mutual friend of Sangeeta and myself, a very amazing painter, um, Chloe Hedden, who is a childhood friend of Sangeeta's and has become a very dear friend of mine. I was on the phone with her one day and I just said, I dream of making this music video. 
And, you know, I wasn't talking to someone who had any power to do anything about it. She's not even a musician, but there's where fate comes to play. And she said, really? You're into mermaids? <laughs> she, goes, she said, wait, I, I have a very good friend in LA who's a professional mermaid. And I oh. said, wait, there's a, is there such a thing? A thing? <laughs> yeah, what's a professional mermaid? Aren't we professional mermaids, Donna? <laughs> hey, a, a professional mermaid is someone who's professional fishwomen. Very much, very much like a professional gymnast. Someone who has trained. Hannah, who, who goes by the the performer's name, Hannah Mermaid, um, learned to swim at the age of seven, like a mermaid, with her feet together and her arms by her sides. In a, in a fit of childhood fantasy and obsession, she started making her own tails right. out of neoprene. And that continues to this day. Decades later, she's absolutely made a living as a performance artist for um, ocean conservation. She does a lot of amazing work to um, promote uh, awareness and preservation of both the ocean and its animals. Um, and she's an underwater model, which means she's not always in a fin, wow. but she has learned how to swim and move beautifully underwater without her hair being across her face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she has an incredible breath capacity, so she can last underwater. She's capable of having her eyes open. She tolerates really extreme temperature changes. It's an, it's an endurance sport. Yeah. And so I was, I was put in contact with Hannah Mermaid in 2020 at the peak of the pandemic when, when the world came to a standstill and I got in touch with her. I said, here's my dream. I would like to make this music video. And so we started talking and things grew from there. I, I really spent a lot of time uh, working with my co-producer on how to be able to find video crews to film and afford this. And, um, it was a long, long process of a year and a half to make this. From the moment I uttered the words out loud, I want to do this music video. Um, <laughs> the moment that we had a, a video, it was a, a little over a year and a half, actually. So, And um, so that that's not her, you know, kind of doing this on a green screen, but more in... in oh, no, you're seeing mermaids underwater. <laughs> They're okay. truly in the okay. ocean. Yeah, I'm looking I at it here. I don't understand how you can open their eyes in the ocean. That's what gets me. Yeah, yeah, the salt water would you no. Know. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> not happening. I can't do it in a pool. So <laughs> no, I know. We we needed two mermaids. So we had Hannah Mermaid, who's and a blonde. Uh, blonde <laughs> to represent the embodiment of Hila Plitman, our beautiful sister, the other soprano who sings with Sangita on this project. Right. And then we needed an Asiatic form of mermaid and you see that an asian and, mermaid actually exists <laughs> and there again just the miracle of the internet and the incredible resourcefulness of my co-producer we found a chinese mermaid living in germany in berlin um and and reached out to her and she was like yes i'd be delighted to do this and so she became the embodiment of sankita that is wild and <laughs> wonderful everything about this project is wild and wonderful i mean it took five years you guys met you know you know through saying either messaging you you um both like had this in just intention um and you put it out into the universe and it came back to you in a beautiful form this is yeah really what, and we and were calling each other. We were manifesting one yeah, another. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's definitely exciting, and it means so much to me because you know sometimes I feel like um, people, you know, particularly like on pop in the pop R and B and hip hop world, it's like they decide, okay, I'm gonna put this person on my record because they can do this, and I'm gonna put this, but and it becomes this engineered thing and not that it's not great uh -huh. but you know it was the two managers behind the scenes kind of pulling things together and instead you guys came together in an organic spiritual kind of way and Absolutely. even now i'm hearing the story of the video and how you know danae you had this idea and you just kind of put it out there and then the resources and the people came That's together to manifest the vision for the video yeah. That's really awesome. It really puts a, 
That's a superpower. Yeah. We are all superpowers. We are all superhumans. We just need to learn how to access these powers. And manifestation is absolutely a superpower that we're constantly working on. Well, let me tell you, I, I think <laughs> Danae is a witch. Oh. <laughs> A white witch, I guess they call nice it. Nice one. <laughs> no, no, a white, you know, white magic, positive yeah. energy, things of that nature. It's. Uh, I'm sure you were in another lifetime. Absolutely. You are. <laughs> I am. I am so blown away, and 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 I would say that, um, you know, the things that I've read about the both of you don't give the depth of your, um, life experience and what you're bringing to your music any credit that's what these conversations are all about is how to get to the spirit of people and and um you know how they're manifesting that in music uh, the subtitle for our podcast or whatever you want to call this is called music media and culture mm-hmm. so um you know i'm curious as to when you're not doing music what are you doing out in the world what kinds of things are you doing out in the world? So I guess I would say Sangeeta, since you're on my screen, why don't you, why don't you take it? <laughs> well, before, you, before you answer, I gotta, I gotta leave, but I wanna say congratulations okay. to you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Jason. Jason. And uh, yeah, and, and I saw a picture of Hannah. She's, uh, she's a mermaid. Oh, <laughs> real living mermaid. <laughs> yeah. All right, Amazing. congrats guys. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much, you. Jason. Bye. So okay, so uh, Sangeeta, when you're not when you're not doing music and and connecting and being sincere with people you don't know on the internet, <laughs> what are you, what are you what are you doing out in the world? Gosh, out in the world, sometimes I feel like I don't really get a break, but it's a good thing. Um, my brain doesn't stop working. I'm constantly when I'm not doing anything. It's the time when ideas kind of start pouring in Mm -hmm. um so I feel like I'm constantly creating 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 I love doing productions I love bringing people together I love making new music um always conceptualizing whether that's my plan for the day or not and um I think all the time I try to stay as open as possible because I just feel like Things come to me every day. People come to me. All of these incredible connections with people sort of, again, manifest um, that then become these deeper relationships where we're going to be doing something incredible in the future together. So that's majority of what's happening. But when I'm not, when I'm forcing myself to not create and manifest and do all of those things, I just love to stay home, honestly, Mm -hmm. meditate, find time to go inward. I love nature. Yes. I love having girl time because girl time is so precious. So anytime Danae and I and Chloe and Hila, we can ever get together, which is so rare. Sure. Those are some of the most precious moments. Um, I'm a family woman. I love hanging out with my husband. I love hanging out with my mom, my, my cousins, you know, um, and I love hosting. I love hosting. <laughs> We're constantly hosting, you know, small little gatherings with those that we love. And I think just staying connected to the people that we love and, and that love us is one of the most beautiful things. And you know, you and me are cut from the same cloth. I love hosting too. And um, yeah. with this being the holidays and stuff like that, um, I, while my family lives, you know, thousands of miles away, um, we, we create family, if you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People who are around and stuff. So it is a beautiful thing, um, to hear, um, and to acknowledge, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just feel so blessed. You probably have a huge family, a big community of friends. Like it is really, truly a gift to have so many people around that, not just acquaintances, but I'm talking real yeah. friends, people that really know you, love you, honor you, and you hold space for each other to thrive mm-hmm. in this world, you know, and family that just pour so much unconditional love. I, I truly feel blessed for this every day. 
I, I'm, I, I, yeah, you, you have a lot, you have a lot to say. And, and by that, I mean, your gift is going to put you in places to communicate certain energies and certain um, uh, concepts to people through your music and through your being that, I mean, that is yet to be revealed. Uh, it's very clear yeah. to me. Very clear. I feel like I'm getting a um, astrology reading right now for a moment there. Yeah. You were an astrologer <laughs> in another lifetime because, yeah. <laughs> I, it, No, I mean, I, I don't ha always have the language, but, um, you know, I know uh, what I know. I'll just say it that way. I have yeah, been. I um, Thank you. Yes, please, please. I, I, look, I remember um, my aunt. Corrine, she actually just passed. She was 102 years old. Wow. And one day at the family union, probably about 10 years ago, she said to me, you're going to be a preacher. And I was wow. like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then I thought about it. And I'm saying, hold on. It's not in a, a traditional, you know, right. no stand the pulpit preacher, but it's the idea of a truth Absolutely. Of truth. So I know that I have the spirit of discernment. I know that I see things and stuff. So, you know, maybe that was what you were getting, but I have enjoyed this so much. Danae. Yes. Culture. What are you doing out in the world? Oh, you have a cat. <laughs> yeah, she's supposed to have been locked up. But, uh, no, she's out <laughs> saying hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, so what do I do? Oh, your microphone. I spend, it's all right, it's hanging, it's all right. Um, I, spend, I spend a lot of time recharging my creative batteries. Um, yes. So I do that by spending probably two hours a day alone walking. Um, wow, okay. I, I just find that that's really, really um, settling and centering for me. Um, I love practicing yoga like Sangeeta, although I don't, I'm, she's a trained Kundalini teacher. Um, I'm just a student, but um, I spend a lot of time with friends and because my family is far away, as you have just said, I want to reiterate what you just said, you know, the family is what you create with right. the, the quality of the relationships around you. Right. And I think that I need to frame that in context of this whole moment and this Grammy nomination the reason this matters to me is because it's celebrating the depth of the relationships that I'm having with my colleagues. Right. There's, there is no accolade that can possibly make me happy if my personal relationships with those around me are not good. Right. So the reason this is a celebration is because it is honoring that incredible friendship and all the joy of these years of dreaming together and working together. So, that is so powerful. Oh <laughs> my God, that is so powerful. You can't, I mean, you know, and let's just say, I know that maybe as little as two years ago, there probably were people who wouldn't understand what it is that you're saying, but the pandemic forced so many of us to be alone, to turn inward, um, and to explore inner space rather than outer space. And I think it has really put a spotlight on understanding that how important our relationships are, you know? Um, you know, no matter the, the nature of them, whether it's the person that you see that you maybe have ignored in the toll booth as you're lying down the highway on your way to work, or, you know, the, 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 the cashier at the, um, at the target or, um, I mean, or the homeless man who, you know, who you pass on the street and hope doesn't ask you for money. It somehow or another has shifted people's perspectives, you know? And so while so many people have been lost and passed on to the other realm um, because of this horrible virus, um, for those of us who have endured it has shifted our perspectives and shifted our energies and mm -hmm. um, our priority and our priorities. That's the word. Mm -hmm. And so, Dene, thank you for this beautiful, awesome, wonderful gift of mythologies. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being part of birthing this, this 
gorgeous record to life. Um, mm -hmm. I have enjoyed talking with the both of you so much individually and collectively. I know we will have the opportunity to do this again. Yes. Uh, you know, absolutely have the opportunity to do this again. And I don't know what happened because I'm now not seeing uh, either of you, but I, um, I wanted to thank you for taking the time and coming on and speaking with Jace, Jason and I today for our holiday edition of, <laughs> of Impact Music, Media and Culture. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your Grammy nomination. And we wish you nothing but well-deserved success. Thank you Thank so you. much, Fiona. It was an absolute delight to speak with you and it would be amazing to come back some other time. Well, yes, we thank you so that. much for allowing us to share and um, creating this space for us. It's really beautiful to be able to, you know, share all of this. So thank well, you. I, let me tell you, I knew it was going to be great, but it far exceeded my expectations because I didn't know how wonderful, you know, I should have just known from the music, but, you know, <laughs> it was really, really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank and with that, welcome. Allison, you want to sign off? Thank you, everybody, for joining us for the holiday edition of impact, classical music. And we like to thank our lovely guests and our host. Have a good evening, everybody. Good night. Thank you.